Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 2nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let me first start up with a couple of updates on stories covered earlier this week. First of all, the denial of service attack via memcached. There's now a good write-up from GitHub who was at the receiving end of one of these denial of service attempts. Well, it turns out that they received well over one terabit per second. So uh, this sort of sets new records as far as the amount of traffic uh, being hurled against a victim. The other issue regarding these memcache D attacks is that in my original write-up, I missed an important feature of these attacks. In my honeypot, I just saw them use the stats command, which uh, does uh, for sure provide some amplification, but what's actually happening here in the commenter to the original diary mentioned this, that the attacker will first actually load some data into the database and then request it, which then leads to these very large amplifications. The other story I would like to update is regarding Trustico. First of all, yes, Trustico did offer a feature where they were creating the keeper for you and apparently they did hold on to the secret key. They also had sort of a feature on their website where you could convert your secret key from one format into another, which of course did require that you uploaded your secret key to Trustico's website. Second part to this is today they displayed a lot of errors to users that tried to visit their site. Initially it looked like it was just overwhelmed based on the traffic caused by all the news regarding Trustico, but apparently they also have a arbitrary command injection vulnerability on their website and that was heavily exploited today and led at least in part to these outages. So far, I haven't really seen any sort of huge increase in certificates being revoked in the certificate revocation lists that we are monitoring. Typically, we see a about around sort of three, four thousand certificates being revoked on these lists, but we may not be monitoring all the lists that Trustico was using. Well, and in news stories, uh, one thing I've been looking into a little bit recently was some of the ways how China is censoring some of its social media, in particular WeChat. WeChat is mostly an instant messaging platform and also features a very prominent and popular group chat uh, feature. In particular, uh, these group chat discussions are often censored. Now, the way this sort of works is there is a fairly long list of words that you're not supposed to use. This list, of course, is constantly updated based on what the topic is that particular day. And users of WeChat are uh, pretty actively trying to evade some of these lists, which uh, then does lead to some odd occurrences. Like, for example, earlier this week, there were reports that the letter N, the English letter N, was blocked. Now there's of course never really an official explanation why something like this happens, but apparently with the recent change in constitution eliminating some of the term limits, the letter N was sort of used as a placeholder for a number like you know, N terms or N years. And that sort of uh, did uh, raise the ire of some of the censors. But uh, typically, of course, it's about uh, Chinese characters. And uh, one fairly popular way to evade some of these filters is to actually use an image. And uh, well, uh, WeChat, and here just to put in perspective, it's about 800 million users, uh, tens of millions of messages every day, many of them images. And WeChat has actually gotten even pretty good in filtering images that contain any of these bad words. Now, OCR, of course, is an obvious way to do that. Some users in WeChat were playing around uh, with sort of distorted images, Didn't didn't really get very far, at least with simple distortions. But one interesting feature they sort of discovered was that 
if you just sort of black out uh, certain words, uh, but not necessarily all words, not all bad words on uh, in a particular document, it makes it pass the filter, which uh, kind of means that they may not actually be recognizing the entire document. They may just be looking at parts of it, maybe the top of the document, or that they're using some kind of artificial intelligence, uh, so some classifier here in order to categorize and find a possible possible bad images, which of course is then thrown off by making sort of a fairly significant change to part of the document. I think the lessons here is, well, uh, for, certainly it is possible to filter messages sort of in real time. Like these images are being filtered as they're being uploaded by the user and at massive scale, like at tens of millions of messages a day. But on the other hand, well, uh, don't underestimate the creativity of the opponent. Uh, people have certainly found ways around these filters by using, as I said, images, by using some sound-alike words and such, and I'll uh, talk a little bit more about this in the diary. And Spectre caused quite a bit of confusion when it came to patching. If you remember, there was a original update that Intel released for its microcode. Microsoft included it in some of its updates, but then had to retract some of it. Well, uh, Microsoft is trying again. Intel now released a new version of the Spectre variant to fix, that's uh, CVE 2017-5715 and has released it for Windows 10 version 1709, that's Fall Creators Update and Windows Server version 1709, which is Server Core. And Microsoft did release a knowledge base article for the track this particular issue and will update it as patches become available for various additional CPUs. Right now, they appear only to be available for Skylake CPUs. Now, the reason Microsoft is releasing these patches is that the microcode is loaded into the CPU as the operating system boots. Same thing happens with Linux and other operating systems, which also need to release their patches. But what's the right microcode? And if there are any issues, that may actually depend on the platform, on the motherboard and such you're using. So uh, this is the kind of patch you really have to be a little bit careful with and you do want to test it carefully first before you just blindly roll it out. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.